a substantial software update for the YOLO Box Ultra. I'm Jason Hoffman. My goal is to help you have the confidence to just press go live. The folks over at YOLO Live have dropped software update 2.4.0 is the substantial update. They have since also released 2.4.1 as some bug fixes, but there are some significant changes to the YOLO Box Ultra's UI in 2.4.0. Let's look at some of those that hit me. Now there are 13 or 14 listed upgrades to the Yellow Box Ultra before you get to the bug fixes. I won't be going through all 14 of those, but there are some that have a significant impact on my live streams as I use the Yellow Box Ultra as a 4K live streaming device, especially when I'm doing my Streamology podcast. The first of these upgrades is the NDI output frame rate and resolution selection. They've given us some control there, and there are some times that I want to put my Yolobox Ultra itself onto the network as an NDI source, and the ability, the ability to set my frame rate and my resolution there is uh, something that is a good upgrade for me. We have here the NDI output. It defaults to the NDI output source being the program, not any of the previews. And I have the choice of it being 720 or 1080. And sometimes my network gets crowded with NDI sources and I need it to drop down to 720. But I also have the ability to change my frame rate. 30, 48, 50, 59, 94, and 60 frames per second. It also drops down. 2997, 25, and 2420. So great customization for my NDI output if I want to put this on my network and use it in another app or in another for another resource for my live streams. <clears throat> the second of these upgrades is an improved overall touch screen responsiveness. And this has been a source of frustration for a lot of folks, especially in the audio section. So when I would go into my audio and try to manipulate these sliders, it was as though my, the touch responsiveness was just in a different place than what the screen actually showed. It is now so much better. As I, I, I caught myself on some of my streams as I would, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing now and showing the, the adjustability on the audio sliders, and I would touch it and it wouldn't register, and I would touch it and it wouldn't register, and I would two or three times before I could find that spot where it would, it always seemed to be a little bit above. Uh, Compass Rose North, than where, than where I would need, think I would need to be touching. And so uh, this, they've cleaned this up and it is really, really uh, prompt. It's, it's really responsive. They did a great job of, of cleaning that part up. The next upgrade in 2.4 is the ability to add multiple image sources. So I can go into my add video source button and choose images. And now I have the ability, take a couple of these from a previous live stream, I can add more than one at a time. I can add multiple image sources, either from my SD card or from portable storage if I have that plugged in. So now image one contains both of the two that I just added. Now, those are not the best examples of what I'm trying to do here, but you can see I don't have to clutter up my screen with different images. I can have those as though they were slides even. And so in my program out, I could just tap through the different ones that I've added. They're also giving us the ability to have these auto advance and give us the time control for how long the slides stay on the screen. Now there's a couple of areas where they've added 60 frames per second. Uh, program out is one of those places. They've also given us uh, RTMP, RTMPS, and HLS support to both vertical and horizontal live streaming. It already existed in horizontal, but they've added it into vertical. HLS is new in this update. If that's not something you're familiar with, it is the next iteration from RTMP towards uh, being able to live stream in with less data and more reliability. Uh, 
you will likely see that coming soon in a lot of different destinations. And then one of the first things that you'll actually see in this update when you start your Yellow Box Ultra back up is that you have the option of doing two in a row or three in a row in your overlays and in your previews. Here in your overlays, it's just as simple as making the touch, and that's going to give you a whole lot more screen real estate as you have various overlays or images that you want to be able to pull from there on your Yoda Box Ultra. To see the same options in your video source, we go into the settings, look down here in video source layout, and now we have a three in a row or four in a row for our video source layout, which again makes each icon smaller, but that allows more screen options for us to be able to choose from as we're in our live streams. They've done some fine tuning for their web URL overlays that, that's gonna enhance the experience for those that are using web URL overlays through their services. And they've done some network bonding optimization for that service as well. Another really nice UI customization they are offering is the ability to reorder what they call tools, the icons on the bottom right of the screen. I call them tabs. They call them tools, but you can now reorder them to put them where you want them. So the 2.4, now 2.4.1 update for the Yolo Box Ultra is found in your settings. If you tap on your little wheel here, you can see your version, tap upgrade. Mine's going to tell me that it's the latest version, but yours, if, it's, if it needs to upgrade, will show that there's an upgrade available. You go through the process there and you too can have the optimizations and upgrades that, you, that the Yolo Live team has given to 2.4 for the Yolo Box Ultra.